show host, filmmaker, researcher, Alan Watt on. Just a great uh, mind to understand the enemy, their psychology, how they operate, what they do. With what is more and more becoming clear, I said this back on Saturday when we first had an emergency transmission that I believe it was a hoax, and now it's becoming more and more abundantly clear. But meanwhile, the fear-mongering just intensifies. Now think about it. You can get 30-plus thousand people on average dying of flu, sometimes more, sometimes less. In the United States, between 200 and half a million every year dying worldwide of the regular flu. And they're telling you, get ready for the end of all your freedom, forced inoculations, total control for one dead person in the United States. Uh, let's go ahead and play this local news clip off local news here in Austin where they're getting tent cities ready with Michael Dell, the New World Order minion. Here it is. Why do you think somebody should sign up to run the Congress Avenue? My uh, we're having some trouble streaming that off the web. Uh, we Okay, yeah, the problem is is that it, it refreshed. We're playing these ads off the web. We ought to start having a hard drive where we capture these, and then we can just play them because these st stupid news sites, it's not YouTube or Google, they just have the worst players, and it'll be working, and you try to play it, and it doesn't work. Well, it, it, we'll play it in a minute uh, coming up with Alan Watt, and, and be sure and send that to the guys to link to that up on Infowars.com and Prison Planet. Uh, dot com, but uh, let's go ahead and uh, bring uh, Alan Watt up. Alan, I haven't talked to you before the show. I have no idea what your view is of this, but I would imagine it's probably similar to mine. Give us your breakdown of what's happening uh, with uh, the fear mongering right now, with the uh, pretty much imaginary flu. Well, it's one crisis after another. We're just coming through the the created financial collapse that rose the IMF to its proper position as a distributor for the world's money. And now it's time to teach the public that the World Health Organization will be the world authority that will guide every country and actually be the ruler uh, as far as medical things go for the entire planet. But ultimately, you must remember the World Health Organization's agenda is to do with sustainable development. Once they have that authority, they're going to move right into the next part, which is depopulation, sterilization, etc., for sustainability reasons. And... There's no mystery about this because when the League of Nations was set up with the same organizations that are in the United Nations, including a World Health Authority, some of the founders at the time wrote about it and they said that this is being set up to be the World Health Authority and they must use panic and crisis to get the public to give them that authority. That's exactly what we're going through today. This flu is just the standard H1N1. It was out last year, according to the BBC and to the so-called experts in Britain. Uh, Tamil flu was, was, was pretty useless anyway. Uh, all the hype about Tamil flu came from the pharma companies that made the darn drugs. All their studies are from their paid agents. They give them glowing reports. But basically you don't need it because this is a mild flu. And those who are dying of it, and it really is down to seven proven cases in Mexico, not 107, um, you find they're compromised already with different other diseases, AIDS, etc., etc., so this is a very, very mild flu. It takes about three days. Everyone who's got it in Canada and Britain are told just to stay at home, drink lots of fluid, all the usual stuff, and it's gone in about three days. And that's it. So clearly, out of the blue, they have been fear-mongering and saying, I mean, I've got the headlines. This is the greatest challenge to face humanity. Yep. You know, this could be the end. Hundreds of millions could die. And then meanwhile, it, yeah, Mexico's saying between 7 and 12 dead, one dead in the United States, that person from Mexico City. Uh, but meanwhile, I've got Time, Newsweek, CBS, CNN, uh, all of these publications, TV saying, get ready for forced inoculations, even if you haven't had the flu. And now they're saying, oh, even if this passes over in the next month, when, when the flu shot's ready, we're going to make you take it. So I think this is also about pushback yep. to all the tens of millions of people waking up to how deadly vaccines are who are saying, no, I'm not going to take it. And they're trying to test the public to see if they can force us to do it. So when they launch yep. the real attack during the full collapse of society, you watch when the, when, when the resistance to the New World Order starts, when we're trying to take our governments back, they are going to launch massive real bio attacks. Uh, Alan, your comments on that? Yeah, the, this is, um, you see, there have been so many studies coming out over the years of the fact that the flu inoculations, every year they tell you in the spring they had the wrong combinations of flu strain, so they were useless. 
But not only that, most folk who get the flu injections end up coming down with the flu. So people were stopping getting, the, taking their free flu shots. So they had to do something to get it back up to to mandatory level. And they and admit, the, the, and they admit, I, I keep forgetting to make this point to interrupt, you make me think, Alan, they admit that all these flu shots actually mutate with regular flu out there and are creating uh, more dangerous strains. Mm -hmm. And the Tamiflu accelerates the mutation, just like antibiotics do with the bacteria. Yes, they're, they're using human beings as breeders, and that's what they use the animals for. That's how they breed the viruses, either in chickens or some other kind of animal, or human fetal tissue. And <clears throat> now they're using living people, uh, and everyone who gets a shot becomes a breeder, and they shed the virus wherever they go. Yeah, It's, it's just absolutely amazing. Alan, why do you think Napolitano came out and said, oh, well, this one's probably no big deal, but the next one, it's coming, it's going to be huge. Yeah. I know. And, and, then, and, and then flying Air Force One through the middle of buildings with F-16s literally 50 feet away. Mm -hmm. And then it came out in memos. They terrorized them on purpose but said it's secret. What <laughs> is behind that? But we'll never get the whole story. In fact, we never get the, the real truth about anything, to be honest with you. Um, as I say, we're living at an age where we have so many distractions and crises. And we're rolling now from simply one crisis to another. But what is interesting is that out of every crisis, uh, the, the, the institutions at the world, uh, the United Nations, are risen up. That's always the solution to their global authority positions with, with IMF, the World Bank, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, now we're seeing the same thing with the health. Now they're on a roll for complete domination of the planet because the United Nations was set up, remember, as a front by the big foundations and the Rockefellers, etc., to be of the world authority. So this is the, the century of change for globalism, where they bring this whole structure in, and they can only do it through crisis creation and offer the solutions, which, of course, was the plan all along. Uh, we're going to roll and roll from solution to solution and crisis to crisis. People have already forgotten uh, that trillions of dollars have been looted from them just a few months ago. And, and, Alan, how obvious is it, and we're going to play this clip, and I want to get your answer to this. As you just said, I'm watching John Kerry last night in the Senate hearing. He says we've got to have a global solution to this global crisis, and the head of the U.N., the Secretary General, Mr. Moon, is admitting they're directing the United States and Canada and, yep. and, and, and Australia and, and all the Commonwealth countries are the ones hyping this up the worst. Uh, they're admitting that they're using this, they say, to strengthen the global governance. Let's play this clip of the fear-mongering right. in Austin with the camps, with the tents being set up for the mass death. Here it is. Yes. And on that note, a modified tent city now being set up at Dell Children's Hospital for those who believe that they have the flu. Fox 7's Rudy Koski joining us live from Dell Children's Hospital with the details. Rudy? Hi, Loriana. The tent started going up this afternoon. They're located directly behind me. Now, take a look. They're in a physician parking area that is directly underneath the helicopter pad. Now, the tents are expected to be ready for people by tomorrow. They're still hooking up climate control systems, and they're doing this because of the large number of people showing up to get a flu test. By mid-afternoon, for example, the hospital had more than 400 people coming into the emergency room. They usually have about 170. Administrators say the tents, there's about three of them, will help separate those who just may be really sick from those who are seeking other types of medical treatment at the emergency room. Now, once again, taking a look at a live picture of the situation here at Dell, the uh, tents are near, uh, right underneath the helipad and the physician parking area. Administrators here and at other local hospitals are also asking people who want to get tested to stop going to local emergency rooms. The first thing that they say that you should be doing is contacting.